Hi, everyone. I'm Wayne Cunningham, and welcome to our X Space. Today, we're discussing the origin and development of ZK Login, SWE's social login primitive. In September of last year, SWE announced ZK Login, enabling social login through Google, Twitch, and Facebook credentials. It embodies the idea that SWE is built not just for crypto natives, but for the public at large. Projects integrating ZK Login can easily onboard users who know nothing about wallets or Web3. But what is ZK Login's origin story? Where did it come from? Today, we have Kostas, Mistlin Labs' co-founder and chief cryptographer, along with Joy and Arnab, members of Kostas' team who helped create ZK Login. They'll discuss ZK Login's development and impact. Thanks for joining us. Kostas, can you tell people about your role at Mistlin Labs? Hey, everybody. I'm, I'm Kostas. I'm leading currently the Mr. Labs team, and I'm coming from Facebook as well, where I used to have a pretty much the same role. I used to be the lead cryptographer both for the Libra project, but also helped on WhatsApp and some other like uh, encryption developments happening to the organization after the Cambridge Analytica situation. Um, I'm uh, in the space for many, many years, uh, literally having been able to work with uh, one of the first developers of Satoshi. Imagine, I mean, there was a guy called Mike Hahn who was uh, literally ha- has built a Bitcoin J library for, for Bitcoin. And he hired me in a previous company before I joined Facebook. And I was a white hat hacker for a while. Probably you know me for, for the work uh, that I did on proofs of solvency and breaking stuff like the DSA algorithm, identifying that many of the exchanges in the past were not solvent and I figured out how to make them solvent eventually. And uh, nowadays I'm working on very interesting stuff uh, with my team. Like we have Joy and Arnab here, some excellent engineers and researchers, especially on the field of privacy. And ZK Login is uh, like one of our flagship products here for for SUI, uh, which is, in my opinion, one of the best primitives uh, at least the community has seen in the last few years. Uh, I pass the torch to Joy and Arnab to give like a very quick introduction of themselves. Like, uh, Joy, can you start first? Yeah, please, Joy, if you can tell us a little, little about yourself and your role at Mistin Labs. If Joy is, uh, I think Joy says, she's a listener now. So I pass the torch to Arnab. Arnab, can you, can you talk about yourself first? Oh, yes. Uh, hi, this is Arnab. Uh, so I joined Mistin Labs last year. Uh, I'm part of Costas' cryptography team. Uh, I've been working on cryptography for many years. I think mainly I've worked on zero knowledge proof systems uh, on the theoretical side. And at Mr. Labs, I get this great opportunity to bring those theoretical ideas into practical reality, uh, which is uh, a great feeling for me. Uh, But other than uh, zero knowledge proof systems, I've worked on other aspects of blockchain, identity, privacy, biometrics, and so on. And a little bit of uh, quantum annealing too. So, yeah. Uh, that support me. Yeah, thank you, Arnold. Uh, Joy, can you tell us about your role at Amiston Labs? Hi, my name is Joy. Um, I'm on the cryptography team working as a software engineer. Um, I was working mostly with uh, a lot of the signature schemes on SWE, a lot of the cryptographic primitives such as hash functions, multi-sig, and most recently on ZK login implementations. Thank you, Joy. And what's really unique about Mistin Labs and SWE is we do have this dedicated crypt- cryptography team to create uh, new features and new functions and, and also make sure that the network is absolutely as secure as it can be. Uh, Kostas, I want to go back to you because we're talking about ZK Login today. So can you just describe what ZK Login is? Of course. Um, I can give uh, like a short story of how all of the things in the blockchain space started. It happened to like a uh, big a coincidence that I finished my PhD at the time that uh, like Satoshi published uh, his Bitcoin paper. And my work was in a uh, like... Um, state of cryptography from moving to RSA to elliptic errors and some new developments were coming. Zero knowledge proofs were uh, like some uh, some of these things. And there was a particular like theory on the elliptic curves, which is called like uh, bilinear pairings. And I was lucky to be at that time uh, 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 literally on time for enabling my technology into something new. Otherwise, I would have been an academic. Um, and then the whole idea was until now, we know that people had to remember passwords, mnemonics, and like uh, all of this, uh, uh, like long or short uh, uh, selection of words that people pick to protect their accounts. 
And this, imagine me coming from Facebook, we realize that it cannot actually work for the average person. Obviously, for some teachers and some people who are like very familiar uh, to, to protect secrets and they know how to do the correct thing, it makes sense. But for the 99% of the population, this would never work. Like even, I mean, if you catch even yourselves, uh, many times that you're logging into websites, you prefer probably social logins just because you cannot remember like new passwords. And imagine that uh, many of our friends are not familiar with password managers. And then we said, okay, this is a barrier, like this is an obstacle for uh, the average person to join this revolution of the blockchain. I personally believe it's a revolution. I can explain even in another thread why I believe all of the uh, cryptocurrencies are backed by something. It's a notary service and so on. But what I said is this doesn't allow them to go into the space. And uh, the problem is obviously on the onboarding experience. They don't know what it is. They don't know what is a wallet. They have used to actually only have access to some in-banking account. They know there is a password, but for, for the blockchain, they don't know who is behind the password and so on. And then um, we had uh, like many uh, discussions around all of these years, the cryptography community, how to connect identity with the blockchain. It was almost impossible. We had some people working on this stuff even as a PhD career, and we couldn't find a way to make it easy until we realized that, oh, we can use existing technologies that are like logging with Google, logging with Facebook, to create ephemeral keys, to create keys that don't live forever. So if people forget them, then again, they can log in with Google and Facebook and they can access their accounts. However, as you can understand, oh, uh, logging with Google, probably Google will give you something and you don't want to reveal this something to the audience, to every observer on the blockchain. And then we said, okay, let's hide it, right? We have privacy preserving techniques in cryptography. One of them is zero knowledge proofs. Let's get whatever we're getting back from Google and Facebook and Apple. Let's convert this into something that nobody can understand what it is. However, you are proving ownership of this account, which means now you can sign transactions. If we add like an ephemeral public, key. you lose your key, it doesn't matter. Go log in with Google again, and then you can sign transactions again with a new key. That was the whole idea. You don't need to remember anything. And because of this, uh, it was actually uh, one of the, in my opinion, one of the best applications for onboarding, first of all, in the SUI network. And we've seen this success. You remember we had this, like SUI, this collaboration with Red Bull and Bybit. And eventually in uh, like just a few days, hundreds of thousands of people managed to create accounts. And all of these people are people coming from TikTok and Instagram and they're fans of like sports racing. And they didn't know what is a blockchain wallet and all of this stuff. So as you can imagine, you open the door to all of the uh, like non-technical folks to actually get into the blockchain space. And then ZK login has an extra property that didn't exist before. You can even, depending on how the wallet is implemented, you can even receive money before you have an account. How do you do it now? Probably with like PayPal or Venmo uh, and some like Web2 technologies. Is it possible even today to send money to someone in the blockchain before ZK login easily without someone having an account? Now you can, right? Because you can send to a particular email account and this email account will just prove ownership of this email account uh, with ZK login. It might not be email because ZK login supports everything, any identifier. I'm telling now email as an example, but it can be anything you can imagine. And then... By using cryptography, you are hiding all of this information from the blockchain, and this person can go and claim the money. That's why uh, you will see very, very soon that ZK Login will also be used as a claimable address and receiving assets even before you even have a password or even if, uh, before you, you know what the blockchain is. So I personally consider it's one of the best innovations, connecting identities with uh, with blockchain today i don't believe there is any anything equivalent in the space especially because it doesn't introduce third parties right there is no you don't trust intel you don't trust uh, hardware it's just pure math magic of zero knowledge proofs costas you mentioned facebook and that that's a great connection because uh obviously you're working on a blockchain at facebook did you start thinking about these types of zk login type of uh, so to log in while you're at Facebook. That, that's a great question. We have Barnab here who, who can also mention a few things about all of the work we did to figure out how the average Instagram user can log in. 
We couldn't manage back then to find this awesome solution with ZK Login. We focused a lot on how we can use biometrics, like opening your phone and then with your face, probably face login, you can manage to have an account. But imagine we have this problem of now you're tied to a particular device. What do you do if you want to move from one device to the other? What if you want to change wallets and all of this stuff? And honestly, I mean, there is a very interesting comment when we publish ZK Login. We have one of the best cryptographers in the world. Um, it's a... Uh, I don't want to reveal his identity, but uh, yeah, it's a male. He's, um, uh, he's, he's working on the identity space for years, one of the most notable cryptographers. Some comment that I heard from him was, how the heck didn't we figure out how to do this all of these years? We had like so many people working, Stanford, Cornell, uh, Berkeley, MIT, so many people working on identity, connecting to the blockchain, but nobody tried to go to the next uh, step, like walk the next mile to make it like uh, production ready. And these folks managed to do it. It's not a coincidence, right? The reason is at Facebook, we had a more like academic uh, background. And uh, until Libra was launched, if you don't have something live, it's a bit more difficult to build something and test it. And now with Sui, what happened is Sui managed to uh, to launch uh, like very quickly in some of using some of the best security patterns in the world. We have, well, we have people working from many companies like Google, former Apple, from her uh, like PayPal, uh, all of the all of the companies you can imagine in Bay Area and Europe and Asia, everywhere. And we joined our forces to say, okay, let's forget what's, what's happening in academia. Let's see how we can actually make it practical, which means you need a UX, a user experience that something is happening in just a second, like in the blink uh, of a second, very quickly. Can you do this with zero knowledge proofs? Even if I wanted to do it uh, way at Facebook, I couldn't do it back then. Zero knowledge proofs were slower. It's literally a matter of timing that we managed to use the technology at the best uh, um, like uh, rate today using the current hardware we have, the current developments we have on zero knowledge proofs. The fact that uh, looking with Google and Facebook is by far more popular than it was a few years ago. And at the same time, we managed to make it practical. That was another issue, right? How do you make these things practical? You cannot wait 10 seconds until you log in. And because of this, and we have like a mentality where the blockchain community after Ethereum, Vitalik, and uh, all of the people who actually evolved the, the whole community, we said, okay, let's be practical. Let's figure out how to do it um, in, uh, in a sense that nobody will realize that they're even getting into the blockchain space. They, they really see login with Google and nothing else, right? You don't even know that you have an account. The fact that I tell you you have an NFT is just because this is happening on the background, but it's seamless to the user. They, they don't really know. And we decided to take the more applied role compared to academic. And you know, these things make miracles. We got, we hired one person from Cornell, Deepak, who is like one of the experts on identity, and he helped us. We had Joy from, uh, like coming from Robin Hood, and she knew how to work with people, obviously having uh, stocks and uh, like dealing with uh, all of this stuff all of the day. And we have Varnab, who is one of the best experts on uh, security proofs, because imagine it's not only putting a product out there, you want to prove that this is secure. And then we have Fotini, Fotini Baldinci, who is one of the most reputable cryptographers uh, uh, in, in the space as well. Uh, with mixers and all of this stuff. And you need to hide identities here. And we have other people working, uh, uh, like Ben Riva is, is a great uh, like scientist that we have. I don't believe without the blend of different folks coming from different backgrounds that this could be possible. Even at Facebook or Google, where things are slower, imagine a big organization, it's very difficult to take risks in technology that might take one year to develop. But we managed to do it in Sui. Obviously, it was a matter of excellence and luck as well. And at the same time, a coincidence that all of these folks came together in the same place. Great. Thank, thanks, Costas, for that background, especially looking the background, how it developed out of your experience at Facebook. Um, Joy, I want to go to you on this question because uh, I want to bring this into the Sui development environment. When, you've been at Sui for quite a while. And when did this idea of ZK login first get brought up to you? When did you first start working on it? Yeah, I guess I'll start with like, um, at the beginning, even before Mainnet launch, we started this cons uh, idea of having multiple, supporting multiple signature schemes. And this is very uh, novel for a lot of blockchains. Uh, uh, you know, for example, Bitcoin, Ethereum, all the traditional blockchains, they only support 
uh, SECP uh, K1 um, elliptic curve signatures. Uh, whereas for SWE, we we wanted to be ready for new signature schemes that are coming in that are more novel, more secure, and we can integrate them into a protocol quickly. So it was kind of like a work started over a year ago to refactor a lot of our code to be able to have this capacity of having different uh, authenticators and having ability to use multi-sig. And uh, we kind of laid a lot of the front work, uh, the foundational work before we start even thinking about CK login. Um, and the moment we start to look into like the papers and start to develop the idea of um, what is it like to write a write a zero knowledge circuit? What language to use? And uh, how do we put the verifier inside a uh, sweet uh, inside the sweet verifier uh, authenticator itself? It started to become a lot easier to do that work and just kind of incremental to add a new signature scheme, which is zk login. And we're able to in incorporate um, a lot of the research and also our cryptographic library work. Uh, directly into Sweet immediately uh, to start benchmarking the verifiers and also uh, just seeing the end-to-end -end performance while we're iterating on the circuit uh, many times uh, throughout uh, like last year. Yeah, and Joy, that's one thing I understand about Sweet. This is a slight segue, but Sweet has cryptographic flexibility, so you can plug in different uh, algorithms. Uh, can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, so currently Sui supports um, like uh, diff uh, we call it crypto agility, meaning that uh, you as a user, you can choose to uh, what signature scheme to use. For example, if you're coming from the more uh, from Bitcoin or Ethereum community, you like to continue to use the same uh, wallet implementation. For example, you can reuse the SECP K1 curve. And then on top of that, um, if you wanted to use EDDSA signature, which is a more modern, um, like uh, signature schemes that you can all, uh, that's kind of what the wallet currently supports. And on top of that, we're, um, there's also um, like your iPhone and your Android enclaves. It has, it natively supports this different curve called like PR1 curve. Um, and if you wanted to leverage uh, the native security that comes from um, your device, um, R1, it could be an interesting curve to choose on. And on top of that, you, we have a uh, multi-sig where you can have a combination of uh, these keys and you can define a threshold and define an address uh, based on uh, different combinations of these keys. And they uh, two out of three uh, signatures can authorize a transaction out of account. And uh, when we say ZK login is a sweet primitive, uh, what that means is that ZK login is considered th equivalent to all the other signature schemes that we already support, and you can use it for any transactions. It is not like a counter traction or anything that requires uh, any component. You can use ZK login for publishing a contract, for call making a move call, or just transfer swing, um, et cetera, and it can be uh, embedded inside a multi-sig, uh, just like all the other signature schemes. Thanks, Joy. And I want to circle back on the idea of ZK login being a primitive in a minute. But first, I want to go to Arnab. If you can talk a little bit about like when you started developing uh, ZK login at SWE, and if there was also carryover from when you were Facebook to SWE. Uh, yeah. So, um, so actually we went through many many iterations of how to design this i remember uh, my initial few days at uh, Wiston here uh, uh working with costas on a whiteboard to go through different iterations of like how do we access state how do we access how do we make persistent identifiers uh and so on so uh it it wasn't like drilled down in a day it was uh uh an effort that spanned uh, at least, I would say, a couple of months uh, with many of us joining in the discussions. Uh, so I think what ZK Login achieved, uh, um, which is kind of unique, is that it addresses three technical challenges uh, for the first time, I believe, in the, in the history of uh, this kind of research. Uh, one is how to map... Uh, uh, open ID authentic. This space was downloaded via spacesdown.com. Visit to download your spaces today. Uh, open ID uh, persistent identifiers to an address on the blockchain because they are different. 
But every time you want to log in through your Gmail ID or Facebook ID, you want to map to the same address on the blockchain so that you know your transactions are consistent across your address. Uh, secondly, uh, how do you authorize transactions by being just able to log into your Google ID? So you can do this on different computers. You need not have access to any any particular wallet in order to do this. Uh, on 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 your machine, you can go to a different machine and get access to the same address by just being able to log into the same uh, same Gmail account. So, uh, and third is privacy. Like you don't want your persistent open uh, open ID uh, identification to be on the chain uh, to be tracked across different transactions. Uh, so. These three things, uh, at the same time, uh, I would say that ZK Login solves for the first time. We obviously stand on the so- sh- uh, shoulder of giants. Like there has been a lot of research that had to have taken place uh, in the community, like how to make uh, zero knowledge proof systems practical. Uh, there was uh, uh, we depended on this uh, open ID setup where uh, you know. Uh, uh, so, so when you log into Google, you get this thing called a JSON web token, and we depended on a particular type of field being present in the JWT called a nonce. Uh, so, you know, it, it's, many of these things seem serendipitous now, uh, but they had to come together for this to work. So, uh, so we worked on this. Uh, uh, on the design uh, to make these three things possible. Um, and then we thought about, you know, what are the different uh, security properties, privacy properties that uh, this system is uh, able to provide. We wanted to at least have a base level of security so that, uh, you know, somebody can't do an impersonation attack. Wallets, what if the wallet is malicious? Uh, we achieved some very interesting security properties as well. Like even if you like log in through Google, even Google cannot uh, trace your transaction on the blockchain. So even if uh, you do transactions based on your ID uh, through Google, Google can't even say that you're uh, using it for signing a certain transaction. So th- these are some emergent uh, security properties that we were able to achieve and uh, prove in the system. Thanks, Sardan. Uh, a quick question. ZK login being a primitive and other social logins on other chains using third party services or the like, can you comment on the, is there a security gain being a primitive in, in SUI? Yeah, so it's part of, as Joy said, it's part of the authentication of uh, of Sui. Uh, it's it's natively built, built into it. Uh, so you can, of course, like simulate the whole thing on Ethereum, but it has to be through a smart contract, which would imply a huge gas cost. And that's not the case in Sui. Uh, in, in addition, we inherit all the, uh, you know, capabilities that Sui provides. So it can... It's either plug and play or you know easy to make plug and play with uh, different cryptographic uh, capabilities that Sui provides, like uh, you know multi uh, It also provides some interesting new applications, like you can even like send Sui to somebody who hasn't even created a zk login ID yet by sending Sui to their Gmail, let's say, and they are able to claim it by uh, by logging to logging in through their Gmail account, which creates a zk login ID to them, and it automatically uh, is able to uh, claim the suite. Great, thank you. Yeah, that seamlessness is is so incredibly important. You mentioned the gas cost too. That's one of the things we've seen again and again with SWE is it's cost less, and that makes it more efficient. You know, for shape for large projects uh, and volume too. Um, I want to go into the question of what a zero knowledge proof is because I've read some interesting metaphors of what as how zero knowledge works. And the one I read had something to do with somebody getting somebody through a maze and giving them specific some information, but not the specific information. So I wonder what do you 
have a favorite metaphor of how to describe zero knowledge proofs? Sure. Uh, yeah, there are many LE5 explanations out there, but I find uh, useful some, uh, you know, uh, an explanation that may be, you know, more useful for blockchain developers, which is that, you know, think of a signature scheme. So what does a signature scheme uh, have? It has, uh, it lets you generate a secret key and a public key, right? So the public key is known by everyone, but the secret key is only known to you. So uh, when you sign something, you demonstrate knowledge of the secret key. And that signature itself is verifiable by everyone, okay? But still nobody is able to, even after seeing many, many signatures from you, they are still not able to sign on your behalf because they don't have the secret key. So, so zero knowledge, uh, I like to think, is an extension of this idea. I, uh, so, so there are, of course, many technical nuances to discuss here, but I won't go into that. But... Think of it like, uh, you know, a signature scheme is a zero knowledge scheme for protecting your signature signing key. Okay. And zero knowledge extends this idea for any computation. So zero knowledge says that, uh, you know, you can, ha you can know the solution to some puzzle uh, secretly and uh, everybody knows the puzzle. Uh, when you when you publish a zero knowledge proof that you know a solution to the puzzle, anybody can check it, but nobody will know uh, the the secret behind the puzzle. So there is this parallel with signature schemes, uh, uh, you know, which is interesting. Uh, in addition, uh, the way we use zk proofs provides uh, another uh, advantage, which is which is compression. So so think of a hash function. So so even if you have a huge file, if you hash it, it, it uh, becomes a few kilobytes, right? Uh, so ZKPs, uh, in particular ZK snarks, have this additional property that you can, even if your computation is huge, the proof can be very small and fast to verify. So, th and that's what we use in ZK login as well. Uh, so think of this property of zero knowledge proof systems as being a hash function, not just for data, but for any computation. So, so in effect, uh, ZK snarks that we use in the system uh, provides two properties. One is privacy of the secret and uh, secondly, uh, compression of computation. Uh, in particular, the privacy that we provide is that uh, you, when you log into Google, you get this uh, JSON web, web token or JWT, uh, which which carries potentially sensitive information. Like it may ca carry your email address or you know, link to your profile picture. We don't want that to get associated with transactions you are uh, doing on the chain. So instead of putting the JWT as the proof that you are able to uh, obtain that from Google, we provide instead a zero knowledge proof that there exists or you know such a JWT, which can be used to construct uh, this zero knowledge proof. So anybody can verify that and be convinced that you know you are indeed able to get such a JWT without knowing anything else about the JWT. Great, thank you, Arnav. That that's a really important point about how you don't need to share. On a password or a user ID with a project you're interacting with, they will verify your identity through ZK login. Um, Joy, I want to go to you for a minute and talk, since when you mentioned users before, we're really talking about uh, users, project builders who create, uh, integrate ZK login into their projects. So I'm wondering if you can talk about the what it takes for a builder to integrate Z ZK login into their app. Um, sure, yeah. So for a user... To, to, we actually provide a, a ZK login SDK in TypeScript to basically help you figure out um, to finish the uh, login flow from Google and then obtain the JWT token in your application. And, that, uh, and then the application first can generate what your ZK login address is. Um, and that's, um, as Sarna mentioned, it's a, a persistent value uh, no matter, you know, when you log in over and over again, but it's uh, fixed data based on your um, Google identity. And then 
And then secondly, uh, once you have the JWT token, uh, you will need to obtain a ZK proof uh, for to make sure that the JWT token itself contains the correct uh, field uh, that are matching your ephemeral um, key pairs. Uh, so that step could be done um, in two kind of ways. We provide like a endpoint for uh, users to generate ZK proofs. And uh, of course, we you can also choose to run the prover yourself as a developer. Um, and uh, once you obtain the ZK proof, um, you can sign the transaction um, similar to how you would usually sign uh, a transaction with the key pair, um, except the fact that you're now using the ephemeral key pair that the user does not need to remember. Uh, once you have this ephemeral user signature uh, produced on the transaction itself, um, based on whatever you use, uh, for example, the programmable transaction blocks, you can assemble anything in there. Uh, and once you sign this transaction block, uh, the SDK provides this functionality for you to combine the ZK proof and the transaction signature together into one ZK login signature. Uh, this signature basically can, has two parts. One is a ZK proof that proves that you are um, you are the owner of your Google account, and it also proves that you did authenticate uh, with Google for this ephemeral key pair. And then the second part is the ephemeral signature that is indeed signed, committed over the transaction data using this ephemeral key pair that the ZK proof had proved that you own as well. So with these two parts. You can call the execute transaction block endpoint and then um, send the transaction on chain. So the process is actually pretty easy on the uh, client side. Um, there's um, maybe maybe two details we can probably talk about later. One is how to for the, uh, the uh, application to manage the salt, which is a value used when you're generating the ZK login address. And it is the responsibility of the application to either store it themselves or give it to the um, user who interacts with the application. Uh, and the second part is how do you uh, save this ephemeral key pair? Um, usually speaking, you define an expiration based on your application need. So for example, if you want the user to play a video game for two days and they don't need to you know, reload or refresh their ephemeral key, uh, you can set a uh, expiry uh, when you're uh, before uh, you send the user to the Google login flow, so the key actually um, can be persisted, say for two days. Uh, while the user is playing the game, they don't have to log in again or generate a new ZK proof. Um, so that's hopefully captures the whole developer flow in a nutshell. Um, and uh, feel free to check out the SDK doc. Um, in our uh, website. Thanks, Joy. Yeah, it's, <clears throat> we've got uh, great advice in the docs on how to do that. And it sounds like there's a lot of flexibility too and how developers can integrate this in, into their projects. Uh, uh, finally, we're at time here pretty much. I'm gonna go to you, Costas, to talk about the future of ZK Login, what new things we might see and uh, what's been your impact? Uh, how, how has it been adopted? Yeah, this is a, a very interesting question. And uh, we already see some ideas from our uh, like community. It's not necessarily us, right? You're asking us who are like creators of the, of the protocol itself. What I realized is everyone is having like something in their mind on how they can use this identity uh, like element, the link between identity and an address in a private, privacy preserving way. And some of the features that we're offering will be the multi-seek that will include ZK login. So people might say, oh, I can use my ZK login account with this wallet and the other wallet and the other wallet, but not any other wallet, only one of these three. And someone can even combine ZK login with uh, a mnemonic, right? If I have a mnemonic, I put it in my uh, like desk, I, I, I put it in my vault. But every day I, I use my login uh, with Google. And when, if one day I forget my, my Google account and all of this stuff, I can go back to my home, I can get my mnemonic and I, I can log in. So we're offering like new ways of people to, to recover accounts, even if they lose Gmail and all of this stuff. Something that is very interesting, and you mentioned it before when you asked uh, uh, like Arnab about some benefits of ZK login against others. I personally see another huge benefit of ZK login. You are not tied to a particular wallet provider. Everyone can build a ZK login wallet. That's full stop, right? 
it's not like you have to go to a particular company to make a, a deal and this is how you're going to enable in your application. Imagine you're a gaming studio. You have uh, like uh, ZK login, like login with Google. You can do it by yourself. You can ask someone else actually to do it for you. You can you can ask all of the other wallets to do it for you. It's not like a particular particular wallet providers uh, like privilege to have it. Everyone can have it. That's why we say primitive. Everyone can use it. It's not like... Uh, 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 a provider that you're in the mercy of, of them, uh, like surviving the, the competition to be able to use login with Google. Even if they provide some backup techniques, if they go offline, there is no way you can do login with Google again, right? What do you do? Now you have to go to another provider that provides uh, ZK login or login with Google. And then it will be like a mess because we haven't seen any company actually from this, uh, like closing down. Uh, and I will personally see many, many wallets actually emerging. Uh, we will see folks even from industries that typically don't have uh, blockchain activity, including commercial, uh, even how you pay for your rental, how, how you do energy consumption and all of this stuff. We will see like people uh, using uh, the blockchain just because of ZK login. And you will also see some applications. Arnab is working on these techniques at the moment. If you want to reveal something about your identity, for example, that you're someone at mistandloves.com, but you don't mention that you're Wayne or I'm Kostas or you're Joy or you're Arnab, you will have the option with another zero knowledge proof to prove in zero knowledge that this is part of my email, but I'm not giving you all of the rest. So imagine how this will be huge for the news industry, for example, to defend against fake news. Someone is coming from CNN.com. It's a CNN.com account, but you don't know what account. Right. And people can think now if they have like a startup idea in their mind, how they can use it even to train, I don't know, machine learning, uh, um, like uh, uh, projects and circuits and whatever they can they can think of. However, they find that the data is coming from a trusted source, but I don't necessarily need to, to verify the full identity of this source. So personally, I believe ZK Login will come up with uh, some great features that didn't exist before. Uh, eventually it will be combined with biometrics as well if people want to log in with iPhone or log in with Google and so on. And you will see like some very interesting stories coming uh, in the next few months. I have I have a list of at least, I don't know, seven, eight cool features that again, all of them, I haven't seen them in the past in any blockchain in the world. And I believe gradually uh, you will realize that uh, so we can go to a next level of like, I don't know if it's Web3 or Web3+. Plus. Uh, but the identity is literally changing the the whole uh, sector, in my opinion. Um, I know that it was presented in other blockchain, even NIST, like National Institute of Southern Technology and other places. And everyone is actually expressing interest on, wow, for the first time in history, we have like an identity uh, connection to to with privacy on the blockchain. Not even the provider can track the, uh, the address. Uh, this is insane, right? Um, it's a new thing, and I, I believe many many startups will emerge out of this. Great. Thank you, Kostas, and thank you, Joy and Arnab, for joining us to go over the development and history of ZK Login. I mean, it just launched last year, and the community is open to develop on it and, and suggest ideas, so it can go so many directions. It's it's great to see this technology out there. Wayne, can I, clo um, can I close with a oh, comment? Sure. Yeah, Absolutely. so Go by the way, why it's ZK login and it's not ZK something else, right? The history behind it is literally, even us, we didn't know how to solve the problem as you asked me from Facebook. But then accidentally, when we had the leadership meeting in Mexico, uh, like lit many months ago, even like one and a half year ago, we went to a restaurant. They didn't serve us churros. We call it the cookie, like the, the element that like Google is giving us. The food that was not in this taqueria, there was not sold. And I had an issue by myself in the borders with my Greek uh, passport. And then I said, okay, I need to figure out how, how I get already like uh, being whitelisted on, on the borders. And then the problem with the salt and the problem with the cookie, we combine all of these things with zero knowledge proofs. And we have a system now that you need some passport, login with Google. You need a salt. You need to hide your identity on chain. And... Uh, this thing that you're getting from Google looks like a quickie. It's not a quickie. It's like a more uh, like interesting data structure. And all of this, along with the magic of zero knowledge proofs, ended up into ZK login, which is, uh, I remember some didn't believe this, uh, uh, this is even possible. And some of the original ideas that I was giving to him, it was not convincing. But when he realized, uh, Sam, I, I can do it with Google now. And then 
out of a sudden the whole situation changed. I know Adeniji is here. And Adeniji, you cannot imagine uh, how this guy is thinking about uh, new features in the space. Uh, even if he's not a cryptographer, in my opinion, his, his brain is going into different directions. And you will probably see features in SUI that don't exist in all of the other blockchains together. So that, that's why I'm happy. I know uh, it, it was my first time in Mexico and my best idea probably for, uh, for this blockchain and I think for the community as a whole. Yeah, as they say, necessity is the mother of invention. Yeah, <laughs> and, uh, and and also the fact that you were there with Sam, the CTO of uh, uh, Mistin and Adeni, and all you know the founders of uh, Mistin. You know, kind of the idea was to make SWE a very accessible network, and zk login is just such an essential way to get that. Yes, done. they should send uh, me in more trips. By the way, maybe we're working to that, and when <laughs> we have like this time to breathe, we're coming with a crazy idea. <laughs> Well, well, we do have you slated for Paris this year. That's Basecamp for all the listeners. Uh, SWE Basecamp is coming in Paris. And uh, I want to thank uh, Joy, Arnab, and Costas for joining and talking about ZK Login. Uh, and I want to thank everybody for coming to listen to this, this talk. And to let you know that we are actually having another Twitter space this week that will happen on Thursday morning at 11 a.m. Pacific time, where we'll be talking with the founders of Carrier One, which is a decentralized cell phone, mobile phone network. Uh, so it'll be a really fascinating topic to talk about and how they use SWE to make that. Make that, that oh, network. I hope eventually they also do CK login with phone numbers. <laughs> it is yeah. possible, right? Nobody it is possible. Now we, we have the technology out there. It, you can use any identifier. <laughs> yeah. All right. Thanks, everybody. Uh, and uh, we'll hope to see you again soon on our Twitter spaces, X spaces. Thank you, Wayne. Thank you.